And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. I want to speak to you from the thought, put it in his hands. Pray with me. You are the potter and I am the clay. Have your way, have your way. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody ought to say amen. While hanging on the cross, Jesus says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. At this point, Jesus had completed his earthly work. He had healed the lame, given sight to the blind, and raised the dead, preached a message of love and reconciliation. He had traveled from town to town, teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God. Everything that he had done led him to this very moment. His last words, which in fact, is a prayer that is recorded in the book of Psalm 31, verse number five. Uh, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Uh, this prayer is from a Jewish tradition uh, where children uh, used to say this prayer to Almighty God. It's very similar to the prayer that we teach our children today. Uh, you are familiar with it. Now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, I pray my Lord, my soul to keep. If I shall die before I wake, I pray my Lord, my soul to take. Jesus is reaching out to the Father. This is important because the seven last words teaches us that Jesus referred to God as Father because he said in the first word, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do but how but however when you look at the fourth word uh, jesus says my god my god why hast thou forsaken me uh, at that moment jesus became like a sponge uh, and soaked up the sins of the world uh, my sins your sins uh, past sins uh, present sins future sins uh, and like oil and water holiness uh, which is God in sin which was Jesus Christ uh, does not mix uh, Christ felt abandoned uh, and the relationship was broken the connection was lost the oneness was compromised uh, however I got good news for you my brothers and sisters uh, when we get to the seventh word uh, oh the relationship between Christ uh, and the father is restored uh, Jesus uh, is teaching us that when we succumb to sin uh, we can approach God uh, as a child uh, and call him father uh, now I understand uh, why Jesus said in Matthew 8 18, four. Therefore, whoever takes the lonely position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, even on the cross. Jesus did not approach God with arrogance, making his demands. No, he came with a childlike humbleness who did not ask for anything but desired to give God everything. Everything. When you make a mistake, miss the mark, backslide, fall short, you need to do what Jesus did. Humble yourself like a child and say it like Jesus. Father, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I got a question, y'all. Whose hands are you going? to put it in oh a baseball in my hand is worth about a dollar 79 but a baseball in Derek Jeter's hand 
is worth several million. It all depends on whose hands it's in. NBA basketball in my hands is worth nothing but an NBA basketball in Michael Jordan's hand is worth six championships. It all depends on whose hands it's in. A golf club in my hands is worth a score over a hundred. But a golf club in the hands of Tiger Woods is worth four Masters jackets. A PGA championship. About three U.S. Opens. It all depends on whose hand it's in. Don't you know that the Father can make more of you than you can make of yourself? I'm glad that the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 verse number 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exhort you in due time. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody who wants to put something in his hands? I dare you to put something in his hands. Put your dreams in his hands. Put your aspirations in his hands. Put your family in his hands. Put your loved ones in his hands. Put your business in his hands. Put your finances in his hands. Put your ministry 